Welcome to the last module for the basics of Android mobile development. Now that you've obtained knowledge from the previous modules, let's dive right into creating your very own calculator app. Throughout the course of this series, you are able to download and install your own Android Studio, set up your own Android virtual device, create your first Android project, explore the configuration of the layout's user interface, and write basic Kotlin codes. Hence, this video is a synthesis on everything that you've learned as you build a simple calculator app. To start, let's create a new project just like you did in the previous modules. Click on the activitymain.xml tab and switch to the sign mode. Create buttons for numbers 0 to 9, the operators, the C button for cancel, then add two plain text. One for inputting numbers and operators, which we'll call input number. The other for outputting the answer, which we'll call output answer. Set the editable attribute to false. This is to make sure you won't be able to type using the on-screen keyboard. Make sure to set their ID names accordingly. As for setting the text value, we wanted this to be set on a different area. To be maintainable, we'll get to setting the values next. Open the strings.xml file. You can find it in the project directory by opening the res folder and then the values folder. This is where we can set the values here. Type in a specific data type tag, then set its name attribute. This is their ID equivalent. Inside the tags is the values. This XML file acts as a container for constant values, allowing other classes and activities to access them. Back to the activity main.xml file in the sign mode, find the text attribute of the buttons and type at string slash, then input the name of the value. This gets whatever value is called from the strings.xml file. Next, we create a calculator class. This class is for the definition of the calculator functions. First, give them a parameter that passes the main activity and context objects. The former so we could use and get the setOnClickListener method and the button ID respectively, and the latter to access the string values from the string.xml file. Next, we create local variables that corresponds to each button in the app, including one for receiving the main activity and context objects. Let's label those variables M and C for now. To get and assign the values to the local variables using the ones from the string.xml file, input c.getString and in the parentheses type in r.string the name of the variable you're going to get. R stands for the resources tag in the strings.xml file. If the variable being assigned to isn't of type string, let's say it's of type int, you attach dot to int parenthesis at the end to convert the string to data type int. Next, create an inputs function that handles button inputs. The number and operator buttons will append their respective string into the input number field. For the operator inputs, create a function that checks if the last element of the input number field text is an operator. If so, then the new operator will replace the old one. Otherwise, it will append to the end. The equal input and C input calls the compute function and clears the input number and output answer fields respectively. Here's the function for checking if an operator is the last element. Let's then create the functions for multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction as seen here. I'll explain what the parameter for array list is for in a bit.
Using the print line function will be useful here as it will display the results for each computation in the console log. It's a useful feature when debugging the app. Now for the beef of the calculator logic, the compute function. First, create three variables, two of type val, one of type var. For this activity, let's name them inputs, numbers, and number c. Assign the text of the input number field to inputs. Initialize numbers as a string builder data type and number c as array list of data type string. For those wondering why we are using ArrayList instead of Array, Array allows us to declare a fixed variable list, while ArrayList allows us to add separated numbers and operators and remove some elements freely, without telling them how long it is or going through the longer process of creating another function just to reassign values to an element. Create a for loop that reads each character in inputs. This allows us to separate the numbers and operators and assign them to the respective array element in the array list. With that done, we start the computing process using a while loop where it keeps looping as long as it detects an operator in the number C array list. In order to properly calculate an order of operation, MDAS, create an if condition that only starts adding and subtracting once the number C array list no longer contains any of the multiplication and division operators. For division, create an if condition that checks if the divisor is zero. If so, then the computing process immediately stops and displays an error message on the output answer field. For each operation function being called, pass on the number C variable into its parameter inside a parenthesis. All of them returns the updated array list, so the while loop can read the updated math expression. Back to the check operator function, add an if function to check if the input number field is still empty which prevents the user from adding any operators until a number is inputted. Now that you've finished constructing the logic of the app, it's time to start running the functions. Go ahead and initialize the calculator object. Name the variable whatever you want, but for this example, let's go with calculator. Then simply type in calculator.inputs. Run the app either using your device or the emulator, and ta-da, it runs. And there you have it. Just a quick recap. In this video, we had a step-by-step -step process in creating a calculator app using everything that you have learned from the previous modules. From downloading and installing your Android Studio, to creating your first Android project, exploring the palette of the user interface, coding basic Kotlin codes and functions, and finally, you are able to incorporate all of these skills to create this calculator app. Well done! I hope you guys had a great journey with us in learning the wonders of coding Android mobile apps with Kotlin. Thanks for sticking with us to the end. 